A long time ago, the Israelite people were enslaved in Egypt. In Hebrew, Egypt is called Mitzrayim, which means a narrow place. But in order to understand how we got there, we have to go way, way back in time. A long, long time ago, there was a famine in the land of Israel. Nobody had anything to eat. To keep his family safe, Jacob moved them all to the only place they knew had food, Mitzrayim, or Egypt. Joseph, Jacob's favorite son, was already there. He had become prime minister of Egypt, assisting a kind-hearted pharaoh, ensuring that people had enough to eat. Over time and over many generations, Jacob's family grew. They soon became a great, mighty, and prosperous nation, and because of this, became a threat to a new pharaoh who did not know about Jacob and Joseph and all the wonderful things they did for Egypt. Out of fear towards these Israelites, Pharaoh enslaved them. He made them do hard work in the hot desert sun, commanding them to bake bricks out of mud and straw and to build cities like Pitom and Ramses. In their anguish, the Israelites cried out to Adonai, the god of their ancestors. God heard their voice and saw their suffering. Moses, having fled from Egypt after defending the Hebrew slaves, was a shepherd in Midian. God called to him from the midst of a burning bush. God directed Moses to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Pharaoh was not eager to free his slaves. When Moses came to talk to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, no. To convince them to free the Israelites, God brought 10 plagues to afflict Pharaoh and his people. Dam, blood. Tzfardea, frogs. Kinim, lice. Arov, swarms of beasts. Dever, cattle disease. Shechin, boils. Barad, hail. Arbe, locusts. Choshech, darkness. With each plague, Pharaoh grew more and more stubborn. Every time Moses asked Pharaoh to let the people go, Pharaoh said no. After the ninth plague, the plague of darkness, the Israelites were told to prepare for what was to come. Every family was to take a lamb and make a special sacrifice to God. They then put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of their homes as a sign that Israelite slaves lived in those homes. The tenth plague was Makat Bechorot, striking down the firstborn sons of Mitzrayim. The Israelites were spared because of the blood on their homes. The angel of death passed over Pasach, the marked houses. After this tenth plague, the grieving Pharaoh relented and agreed to let the Israelites go. They were in a hurry. They knew Pharaoh could change his mind at any moment. They did not even wait long enough for their bread dough to rise. They quickly gathered their food and belongings and left Egypt as fast as they could. Sure enough, Pharaoh did change his mind. His army chased the Israelites into the sea. And just as the last Israelite stepped out onto dry land, the waves of the sea crashed down on Pharaoh and all of his men. The Israelites were saved. They rejoiced with singing and dancing even as God grieved the loss of life of the Egyptians, who were also God's children. We remember these events today with the holiday of Passover, beginning with the Seder, a special meal that includes elements such as drinking four cups of wine, asking four questions, reading about and discussing the story of the Exodus from a book called a Haggadah, eating foods filled with meaning like unleavened bread called matzah, and bitter herbs called maror, and through it all, trying to imagine what it would have been like to be a slave to Pharaoh in Egypt. We continue to tell this story each year at our Passover Seder because we know that if God had not freed us, we would all still be slaves. We recognize that the more we learn and talk about it, the more we can see the suffering of others and feel called to make sure that all enslaved people are freed, even today.